That's a long story. You want to hear the whole thing? I'll give you the shortened version. So uh, I grew up in Tennessee, and I um, was a normal kid. I always loved music, but my parents bought this keyboard when I was eight years old. My mother was playing it. It was like Christmas Eve, and I couldn't take my eyes off it, so I got up at like 4 a.m. the next day because I thought everybody was as enamored as I was with it. I just started playing a new how, and I don't know, man. It's just, it's just kind of one of those things, you know? So... What's like, I guess, what was last year like for you, and then what are you hoping to accomplish this year? You know, I don't, I don't know that I have specific things like on a list that I'm going to call for. I just love music. I love playing music. I love making music. If I don't have a show to play, I'm going to get in my car and I'm going to go find a show to play. If I'm not making music, then I'm recording music. If I'm not recording music or making music, I'm going to be playing music live. Um, for me, you know, last year was a lot of. <clears throat> Overcoming not being on a label, you're gonna get past that and making a new record. So last year was completely focused on making this new record, and the record came out in November. So this year is just about staying on the road, staying busy. So what I mean, because I guess the music industry is changing so much where mm -hmm. you don't even need a label half the time. You just need the fans and the fan support. So. Absolutely. Well, that, that, I'm so stoked about that, and I tell people. The music industry is not getting any worse. People love, you love music just as yeah. much as anyone that's ever loved music. You love music. Everyone loves music as much, if not more, than anybody ever. That includes the fucking 60s with the Beatles or with Dylan or anything. People love music. And I just think as an artist, you know, obviously, I don't want to get taken advantage of. So I've got to kind of have a business mind for it. But for me, it's all about making the music and getting it direct to the fans with as few people in between as possible. Because there's something pure about music that comes from the heart, you know? And to me, it's not, it's not worth it to make millions of dollars. I'm not doing what I love, mm -hmm. you know? Music saved my life as a kid, so. So, I guess when you write songs, like, do you have a special process where you have to come up with a melody first and then you'll put lyrics to it, or do you just kind of write the lyrics and figure out some way to sing them it's later all on? all about the lyrics, all about the lyrics. What I do is, I will, usually in the morning, or right before I go to bed, I'll play piano. Just like hours, play piano, come up with all these little things, put them back, keep them in my mind, come up with little melodies and stuff, but I'll never write because I don't know what I'm talking about. How can you write a song if you don't know what you're talking about? So then I'll be like driving down the road and I'll, that idea will hit me and I'll just kind of like dig through, you know, all the ideas that I have. And, um, and at that point it comes really easy. So I guess the first thing is, is usually the music and the melodies and then, but, but the, the, you know, the, the special piece is, is always the lyrics and the lyrical idea. I feel like you've always got to have something to, you know, a lot of people listen to music and they can listen to a song five or six times and never know what the words say. And for me, I'm the opposite. I couldn't tell you the melody, but I can tell you every word after listening to a song once. That's just always as a kid, what I went to, what I wanted to hear was what the person had to say. It's such a beautiful way to present words, you know, mm -hmm. rather than just saying them, to, to sing them. So always, that's always been where my interest is at. So do you have a favorite lyric that you've written that, like, when you got it out and you wrote it, you just kind of took a step back and it's like, wow, like, I can't believe, like, that's what I created? Uh, I don't do that too much with my stuff, no. Um, I mean, I could tell you a lot of my favorite lyrics from other bands, but I don't know that, I don't know, that gives me kind of the heebie-jeebies to say, this is the favorite thing I've ever done. <laughs> and I'm just kind of not my style. Um... But if you had to tell someone to go listen to one of your songs that has the most meaning, which one would it be? If I had to tell somebody to go listen to a song, um, well, A, it would depend on what kind of mood I was in. So there's a happy mood, I'd probably send them to something a little less uh, depressing. Not depressing, depressing is the wrong word. But I do write a lot of autobiographical stuff, you know, stuff about my life. Like I said, the lyrical thing, I don't feel like I can... It feels fraudulent to me to stand on a stage and sing about things that I don't understand and that I haven't experienced. Um, probably uh, the song called One Last Song that I wrote a few years back, but it finally got cut um, for the new record that came out. Um, I guess it's, it's one of my uh, the songs I'm, I'm a little more proud of.
But I'm proud of them all, you know. And then how do you use, like, your social networks to stay in touch with people and keep everyone updated? Oh, it's huge. It's my favorite thing. Man, my, I had people around me that talked me into it. I didn't do it. And they're like, man, you got to try this out. And I was like, no, fuck that. I'm not interested. I don't want to spend all my time on the computer. Like, I literally get a headache if I look at a screen. I got to be out on the earth. I got to be on the ground. And I started this up, and then, you know, some of the built-in fans started coming, and they started saying things, and I'm just totally hooked. It's amazing. The things that you can get on a daily basis. I mean, the earthquake can hit in Japan, and in about 13 seconds, everybody in the fucking world knows about it, you know? So for me to be able to share my favorite music with my fans, and to be able to share my music and get it out, to see where their heads are out, I don't want to just be this artistic, sad kid locked in a closet making music for myself. I want to know where my fans are at in their heads. I want to know what their world is like. And so um, social media, for me, is, is a way to kind of keep tabs on everything. And then it's also great for, you know, releasing stuff. Okay, and then, um, if you, like, could put together your dream tour, what artist would be on it? Oh, man. Gosh, that's so difficult. Or, like, okay, more like a festival, so you could have a ton of... Okay, if I could do a festival, man, you two would be there. Everything Britpop. I'm a Britpop kid. Like, I like almost anything. I like a little bit of country music. I like, I like a little bit of rap every now and then. But at the end of the day, when I close my eyes at night, there has to be a Britpop song playing. So it'd be Coldplay, Keen, Radiohead... Travis, Muse, U2, and this guy named Ron Sexsmith, this Canadian guy, Ryan Adams. You know Ryan Adams? I feel like I've heard Amazing of him. Amazing songwriter, He's just phenomenal. Um, Joni Mitchell, even though she's a little older now. Man, there's so many. There's so many people. I think for me, the most um, important thing as a writer is to, is to do a lot of music, or else you just become like a shitty knockoff of a shitty knockoff. You know, because every band's a knockoff of something, the stuff that they listen to. So the more things you listen to, the more unique you can make you sound, I think. So there's so much i got to pay homage to. So if you could, like, write with anyone or have a producer work with you, do you have, like, your top ten? Man, I've always wanted to work with Nigel Godrich, the guy that produced a lot of the Radiohead stuff, pretty much all the Radiohead stuff. Other than that, though, you know, that's still kind of the... Um, like, I love other artists, I love listening to them, but when it comes to my stuff, I'm more of a... I'm more like to kind of take the lead and all the stuff. I actually have been doing some writing with other people lately and you joined with us, so it's a hard question. I don't like hard questions. <laughs> um, and then if someone comes to see you live, like what can they expect to see? I don't know. You'd have to ask somebody who's seen me live. <laughs> see, I, I just feel like, um, you know, when I was on Warner Brothers, they gave me media training on like how I should approach these answers and how I should like twisted into talking about myself and talking about all the things I've done. Um, I love I love music. I can tell you that the point in the world which I feel most alive and most doing what I am on this earth to do is when I'm on stage. I've never been more excited. If I could live up there, I would. <laughs> so what you can probably imagine is just seeing someone that's completely in their element. Like, I love it. There's nothing more important or um, valuable to me in my life than playing live. And then, if you could get your music placed on, like, a TV show or something, do you have, like, your dream of, like, you have, like, this, you know the song that you've written that just, like, fits perfectly with some show? I don't, you know, and I, honestly, I've watched so little TV, I can't even tell you what shows are on right now. Um, I know there's a lot of, uh, a lot of those shows look for, like, moody music, and my, my music is moody, but I don't, I don't gear my music toward things like that. Like, I would be honored if someone wanted to put my music in a show, but, um, I wouldn't even know, man. As long as it's not, uh, the fucking Kardashians or <laughs> Teen Mom, and I'm fine, you know? <laughs> put it in the drama, baby. Drama. <laughs> um, and then, I don't know, I guess just, like, if you could play any venue in the world, do you have oh. your dream? Carnegie Hall. Carnegie Hall and the O2 Arena in London are my big, my big dreams. Carnegie Hall with just wearing a really nice suit and just a piano in the middle of the stage. Do a few nights and play like for about an hour and a half. And that, that to me has always been a dream of mine. Um, just like the pretty little... Just, just, <laughs> just like the about spotlight. It. Just Absolutely. Like and people that are just listening, they listen to the words, you know. It's, it's almost, I'd almost be telling my life story, you know, because like I said, my songs 
on and on about it, graphical things. So, um, yeah, it's gonna happen. I'm gonna do it. So. And then I always kind of touch on like nonprofit or charity or work to give back to fans or the community and stuff. So, do you have anything that you're attached with or that you want to do? Uh, yeah, I don't have it on me. There, dude. I think as, as an artist, I think any artist that has any kind of influence over people should have the things that they believe in the most and they shouldn't be pussies and they should should be at the forefront of that. Um, one of my all-time goals is to be the, the spokesperson for um, this cancer that my mother had that she actually passed away from and that's going to happen at some point. And then there's this brand called Falling Whistles. Have you had Falling Whistles? I've heard of it. Really good company, fallingwhistles.com. Um, and they, they take the proceeds from these whistles and send money over to Congo to Congolese-run organizations that rehabilitate kids that have been in war through music and art. And um, it's just a really, really good cause. Um, there's so much shit in the world, you know? It's hard. There's so many good causes out there. But those are the two of us.